Hi everyone, it's Tom Mackey here. Now in some of our videos, we've had some comments where people wanted to know how I overcome challenging weather conditions on my trips. So I'm gonna take you on a little journey around the world and show you some of the really extreme conditions in heat, cold, and some other challenging conditions. But first we're gonna start by warming you up. So get comfortable, and I'm gonna talk you through some of the uh, images now. So one of the things I'm always asked, do I actually take any special gear? Uh, not really, I do use the same pack, same gear, but I use it a little bit differently. But there is one piece of equipment, a really expensive piece of equipment that I have to have on all my trips. I take it everywhere. And that is the trusty Ziploc bag or freezer bag. Now, this is um, essential. So especially in hot conditions where there's a lot of sand and dust around, I use one of these Ziploc bags to put my gear in, my camera body, my lenses. Uh, that just keeps all the sand out. Now, I, I can remember whenever I photograph sand dunes, invariably I will come back and I'll have to empty my backpack out and I'll pour sand out of it because especially if you have any bit of wind, that sand gets in everywhere. But the Ziploc bags will help keep those uh, out of your most expensive gear. So the other thing about using Ziploc bags are when you're in a nice cool hotel room with the air conditioning blasting and you walk out, take your camera out, the first thing that's gonna happen is the lens is gonna condense up and you're not gonna see anything through that. So I always put my lenses and bodies inside of these, take them outside, let them warm up before you take them out. And that really will help a lot. I can't imagine what that's doing to your sensor if if you get any condensation on your sensor when you're changing lenses, lethal. So always remember to do that. So some of the feedback that we've had about this is, do I change my shooting style? Not really, no, that remains the same wherever you are, but you do change how you actually work in that environment that you're in. So starting with uh, deserts, uh, now these can be lethal if you're not careful. Now I usually go with, um, things in mind, obviously a hat, sunscreen, the usual stuff, but there are other things that you have to be careful of. Um, as in this picture here, where I'm shooting in a Choya cactus grove, or um, whatever you want to call it, at sunrise, it was extremely difficult to get the right composition and not come out with loads of cactus needles stuck in my arms and everywhere. So what I tend to do is I wear, um, gaiters around my um, legs so that if I'm brushing up against any cacti, uh, you know, it might go into the gaiters and not on my legs. So the other thing is being more aware of your environment. So when I'm walking through the desert, I take care of where I'm actually gonna place my foot. I'm looking out for snakes, spiders, uh, cactus that might actually brush up against my leg. Um, so you have to be more vigilant in that sort of environment. So having made that sound quite torturous, in complete contrast, photographing sand dunes are a blast. I mean, the kid comes out of me when I'm doing sand dunes. When, you know, you climb to the top of a dune, I just have the urge to just run down or slide down, you glide down these things. Um, and you get overcome by all the sand and everything. It is a lot of fun. But now in this image here, I was photographing in Mesquite Dunes in Death Valley. And I was there with a friend, Rod Edwards, and we were um, doing all sorts of great images, but I felt that I needed to include a human element. So I asked him just to walk up the ridge of this sand dune. And I thought this just makes such a much better shot. Okay, so sticking with deserts, I'm gonna take you on a little nostalgic journey back to my days of Velvia. Now, if anyone, doesn't know what Velvia is, just Google it. It was a brilliant film emulsion that was highly saturated in colors. And so I'm on a private reserve in Namibia on this shot where uh, the first light hit this brilliant orange sand and just the impact was just amazing. Uh, and the colors, I, it's funny, I can't seem to replicate this in digital. I come close, but uh, there's just nothing like Velvia. So now that we've covered deserts, we're gonna to go to the deep freeze. Now this requires a completely different mindset. First and foremost, you've gotta be comfortable. So clothing is essential. Layers, layer up. That's the way to do it. 
Uh, thermals definitely as a base layer. Uh, you want to have really warm boots, waterproof boots. Now, I recommend uh, Sorrels. Now, these are a Canadian brand. Uh, they're completely waterproof boots that are extremely warm. And also, obviously, your, your hat, you lose a lot of heat through your head. So have a nice thermal hat. Okay, gloves. So your hands, really important to keep those hands warm. So I start by a thinner, thin inner glove uh, so that I can actually still work my camera controls and then a thicker outer thermal glove. And then I put hand warmers inside. So it's essential to keep your hands nice and warm. If you're not comfortable and cozy out in those cold, harsh conditions, you're not gonna be able to stand there and think about the scene. So that's a primary thing to think about. So let's start by talking about extreme cold conditions. First stop, Iceland. Now this has to be probably one of the harshest environments I've ever photographed in. I always tell people that uh, when I was taking workshops there, I said, it is an extremely harsh environment, not only on your body, but on your camera gear. And that's because the, um, the windy conditions there, you've got volcanic ash blowing around, you have rogue waves on the, on the coastlines that can easily take you out, and it has done in the past. So in this first image, we're gonna talk about photographing icebergs on the beach. Now this is Yokosarlan Beach, quite famous now. Everybody turns up there for dawn light coming through the ice. The nice thing about photographing this location is that you never know what you're gonna find on the beach. You know, interesting pieces of ice. Now one year, I found this amazing ice sculpture with a hole in it. So I thought, we've gotta use this. So uh, we waited until the sun rose high enough just to illuminate the backside of the ice so it just looked like it was just glowing uh, against this nice deep blue sky. Um, but we had to have wave spotters in order to accomplish this. And what I mean is each person had a chance to photograph the, the, the sun coming through the hole in the ice, but we would have to stand off to one side and watch the waves coming in. This is right on the edge of the coast. You get these big waves that hit the ice and there was one that actually took this huge piece of ice, probably the size of a large desk and shoved it up the beach. So when you've got a person standing right behind it, it's extremely dangerous. It's essential to have a wave spotter that's watching those big rogue waves that are gonna come in and push the ice up the beach. So you have to have an exit point. So you have to know where you're gonna run um, in this case. So if you actually run in between two pieces of ice and the wave hits those, that'll crush your legs quite easily. So you have to know where you're gonna to run to safety and get out of the way. So it seems like a quite a peaceful image, but to actually accomplish that was quite dramatic. Okay, so following on with the iceberg theme, on the same beach, it was funny, this was a really busy morning, and there were a lot of photographers lined up the beach, and they all had their own piece of ice that they were photographing. And I was walking along, looking, just looking for something of interest, and I saw this interesting piece of ice sitting on its own. I'm looking around thinking, why isn't anybody photographing this? It's amazing. So I set up and I was just trying to line up the sun coming through the hole in this piece of ice, but I wanted to accomplish something a little bit different. So I wanted a little bit of action. So I was timing the wave, hitting the back piece of the ice and using something like a 15th of a second just to get some movement to the water coming through and around the ice. Uh, that accomplished this image. Now, it was funny because when I was using, um, I'm really concentrating on this uh, ice and I'm not aware of anything that's going on around me. As soon as I finished, uh, I just picked up the tripod and turned around and I had this group of photographers watching me <laughs> the whole time. Uh, it was quite entertaining, I'm sure, because I kept having to run back as the waves came in and go set back up again. So I kept doing this back and forth until I got the image that I wanted. So the extreme cold in Canada is completely different to Iceland in that it's a, it's a high alpine dry cold, um, but it still smacks you around the face when you walk out of that nice warm hotel room and everything just goes Eat, like this. Oh, it takes your breath away. But you do get used to that. And I would say that I've probably accomplished some of my most amazing winter shots in Canada. It's one of my favorite places to photograph. 
So in this image of Vermilion Lakes in Canada, I think this really brings home the, how cold and crisp everything was. Now everything was covered in hoarfrost and what I wanted to capture there was this really nice beautiful light uh, in these conditions. At that time of the year you have a low angle of light so you have this beautiful warm light pretty much all day long and the, the mist coming off the, the lake was just gorgeous with that hoarfrost as well and the, um, the mountain in the background. So you've got this beautiful foreground, midground, and background. So there's another challenging condition that a lot of people don't often think about is humidity. Now, I was photographing in Iguazu in Argentina and Brazil and photographing the, the beautiful waterfalls there. But every day I would walk out of the hotel, out of this nice cool hotel into this sweltering high humidity environment and you're instantly sweating. And I'm thinking, what is that doing to the gear? Luckily, you know, I have all the gear in my uh, Ziploc bag. So I'm adjusting the temperature before I actually take it out. Now, with humid conditions like this, I, I hate to think what that's actually doing to the inside parts of your camera. I know they're sealed, but I don't really want to trust that manufacturer's sealant. So I add a little extra help to it. So I have those little silicone crystal sachets that you get whenever you buy equipment. I save those and I stash them in my bags so that actually will take and draw any sort of moisture that may be in the equipment. So as I've explained, shooting in extreme weather conditions is not without its challenges, but it can be extremely rewarding. And I've captured some great images over the years in these extreme conditions. So when you go out and you're planning a trip for these extreme environments, think back on this video and take some of these tips along with you. So as ever, thank you very much for watching this video. If you haven't already done so, hit that subscribe button. We'd like to have your likes and definitely your comments. Love to hear your comments. So thanks for joining me today and I'll see you again in the next video. Bye for now.